everyone, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you are all doing really well and staying safe. I am so excited for today's episode, but I'm also a little sad because some sad things have to happen. Um, if you didn't watch the episode at the beginning of the week, I basically was describing kind of what my plan is going forward for the war and everything with the Decade series. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to link that above. Um, but I really want to just jump into it and get started. So let's go check in on the Dempseys. So we currently have this little cutie who is actually late for school. She is a grade B student, so we know that her grades are okay as far as, um, although I didn't get her her homework. So hopefully she will actually study hard instead of making friends today because I don't want that to go down. Um, but basically, we are going to be aging up ba um, little Ami in this episode. It is time for her to age up and she is slightly older than Diana. So I wanted to age her up in this episode and then in the next part we will age up Diana. That way everybody is close to Bailey's age so little Bailey will have her little friend group. So I do want to age up Ami fairly quickly in this episode. That way I can get her makeover going. So I am going to go ahead and get Romy to make a birthday cake for her daughter. Oh, I love Stanley. He's always helping his dad out. Like seriously, nobody should ever be allowed to like touch this garden in this house. <laughs> and um, we also in the last episode with this family got to see the chickens. So I'm so excited. Oh, look at this tell a snowy story. Play with the chicks. Our little chickens are walking along in the farm. We also have our most adorable little babies. Oh my gosh, does he not look so much like his dad? And we also upstairs have our little toddlers. We have Benny and Betty. They're doing really good. Oh, can you go ahead and try to potty train Benny? So I need to get, I also need to work on the two uh, toddlers needs today because it's been a while since I've really spent time in this house and like had them work on all of their skill levels. I am keeping it to be a fairly private event um, just because of the fact that um, everybody is kind of gearing up for war and I think a lot of people are going to be leaving fairly soon. Like Charles is getting ready to leave for war and stuff like that so I don't think that there's really a time for you know, everybody to be getting together for a birthday party. It's kind of sad, but it is true. So I think Ami is going to have a little bit more of a private event. Um, but at least she's going to have her mom and her dad and everybody here tonight for it. So we've got Harry taking care of his little babby, a little cute Betty. I think Betty is going to look a lot like Emma when she ages up. She, she definitely looks like she's Harry's kid. Like, definitely. Oh my gosh. She's like a spitting twin of him. Look, he's trying to talk with her. Look at these father-daughter moments. I love this for them. So I am going to get Ami to come over and blow out her candles. And then we can give her her makeover. I missed you, Harry. I decided to stop by. Oh my gosh, Elsie. And look at this, Harry. Remember how you said you wanted to hang out more? Well, here I am. Oh, we missed her birthday from this. Oh, I'm sorry, Ami. Okay, so Ami is a outgoing sim. I do really want Ami, as she gets older, to be more food oriented because I really want her to run like a diner with her younger brothers and sisters, like with Benny and Betty, and have like a bakery or something. I really want to get her like the big baking machine. I think that would be really cool. So I do think I'm going to give her the Master Chef aspiration. And I might give her something along the lines of cooking. So we'll give her the foodie trait. So she really, uh, these sims become happy and have fun when eating good food, become uncomfortable when eating bad food, and can watch cooking shows for ideas. So I think she'll really enjoy learning how to cook. So let's go take a peek at her before her makeover. Oh my gosh. She's going to be cute, definitely, but uh, definitely an interesting choice of outfit. <laughs> um, did she have really blue eyes? I really don't remember now. I'm pretty sure Ami had blue eyes before she aged up. She wants to be friendly with Harry. That's really sweet. And look, now she's aged up. She's coming over to take care of her little brother. 
Oh, she's so cute. Let's just take off the hair. She's definitely unique looking, but I do think she is really cute. Um, okay, so I'm going to go ahead and give Miss Ami Sato her makeover, and I will be back when I am done. Okay, so I finally finished Little Cute Ami, and I have to say, I think she looks really cute. I kind of decided with Ami to go a little bit more like a, a girl who likes to wear pants as opposed to a girl who's, you know, super dressed up because of the fact that, you know, she grew up on a farm, you know, she's been helping out with the farm animals her whole life, she really likes to cook, so I just feel like this would be more her look, so she's more into like the casual slacks of and like, you know, being able to be comfortable, but oh my gosh, isn't she so stinking cute? I absolutely love how she turned out. Um, so this is her formal, much more proper, and I stuck with the whole pink vibes that I was feeling for her. Um, so this is her fitness look. And for her party, she's like a little bit more dressed up, but with like a super simple heel because like she's still a lady, but you know, she's not really super interested in like looking super glam. And then her swimwear, oh, I just love it. Hot weather is like farmer girl meets like late 40s adorableness. And then her cold weather. Again, just like she's just, you know, a little farmer girl. She loves Harry so stinking much. And she loves helping out her dad. And she just feels very motivated by, you know, the farm life. So I really love her. Let me know what you think. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Uh, let's go ahead and jump back in the game. Okay, so I just... We just jumped back in the house. Uh, let's go ahead and look at this cutie up close. Wait, 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 wait. Where are you going? I'm trying to look at you. Oh my gosh, she's so cute. So I think we'll get Ami to come to the downstairs bathroom and she can go ahead and give a bubble bath to her little sister Betty. It's really nice that we have so much help and one of the reasons why we really need said help is because one of the main things that we are actually doing in today's episode is Stanley has a secret mission of his own. Stanley has been hearing about the talks of the war. He has been become almost obsessed with it. He has been listening to every evening radio show. He's been asking his dad, like, what was your experience? You know, like, how did things go? You know, how did grandpa die? You know, like, are you happy that you did it? Are you, you know, do you think it was the right decision for you? So, you know, like, he's really been almost like enamored, obsessed with the idea of joining the army. And I think Harry just thinks that it's like Stanley's trying to show interest in like his dad's past and like, you know, that kind of thing. But really Stanley, I think is trying to decide like, should I go, should I stay or should I go? Stanley, you know, he has always wanted to prove himself to his father, but he also has a lot of family members he loves. Like Stanley loves his sisters. He really, he has so many siblings. So if we go ahead and look at Elias, look at all these grandbabies. I can't even fit them all in. We've got so many grandbabies, a whole new generation. If we thought we were going to be busy with seven Sims to keep up with, how we are going to keep up with all of these grandchildren, I literally have no clue. Um, but when you look here at Stanley, Stanley, look how many sisters he has. He has Marisol and he also has Alicia. So these are his half sisters on his mom's side. And then he has his half sister and half brother on his father's side. So he is super, super close with all of his sisters. And I feel like he feels like he needs to protect his family. He feels almost like it is his responsibility. I believe that Stanley is actually going to go tomorrow to the office where you sign up for Uncle Sam and he is actually going to lie on the application about his age um, to serve because he really wants to protect his family and he feels like he needs he feels like he needs to do something about it. Oh no, do you see the big pimple on this girl's nose? Oh, if that's not being a teenager, I don't know what is. Okay, so it is 5.30 in the morning. Stanley is awake and he's really hungry, but his hydrine, hydrate, 
his hygiene is low. I'm going to let him go ahead and go to the bathroom and take care of his needs. And little Ami's doing okay. I think I'll just get her to wash her hands and brush her teeth so her hygiene goes up a bit. And hopefully by then, everybody's um, breakfast will be ready. Little do any of them know that Stanley is not going off to school. He is going off to sign up for the army. So he has actually decided he's not going to share it with his parents because he knows for a fact that they are going to try to talk him out of it. So he is just going to quickly come over and give everybody a hug. So he is saying goodbye to his sister who is off to school. Uh, the babies are still sleeping so he's not going to wake them. And he's going to come over to his dad and he's just going to give him a hug before he goes to school. So he's going to come over and he's just going to say, oh, bye, dad. I'm running late for school. I just wanted to give you a hug. And I want you to know, like, how much I really appreciate everything you've done for me. You know, you have given me such a great life. You've taken such good care of me over the years. And... I just want you to know how grateful I am. Uh, so they're becoming best friends and Harry looks like he's sick, um, but he's gonna say like, yeah, of course, son. Like, why wouldn't, you know, of course I would do that for you. You're, you're welcome. Uh, get to school, you're gonna be late. So uh, Stanley has said his goodbyes. This poor little babby needs to be fed. This house is so much work. Okay, she's on it. Thank goodness. And it is dirty in here. We are getting laundry everywhere. Um, but anyways, so I'm going to go ahead and me and Stanley together are going to travel over to the town hall where we can get the registration papers to sign up for Uncle Sam. So Stanley has arrived here. He's feeling very anxious. This is the office where he can register for the army. So he is going to come up here and he is going to try to do a friendly introduction and just let, you know, just introduce himself and try to register for the army. So he is speaking with one of the registration people and they are saying, this is great, fill out these forms and you know, then we will process it. So Stanley is going to go ahead and fill out the form. So I have Slice of Life installed in the game. So under fitness, I'm gonna have him actually go ahead and visit the hospital because um, they're gonna send him over to the military hospital to actually get his assessment done and his physical. That way he will know if uh, he is eligible and if he's fit for service. So, you know, once they do the assessment on him to determine if he is healthy enough to serve in the army, they will then send him to his base. Now, Stanley is signing up thinking, you know, it's not going to be that big of a deal. You know, I might go, you know, to the base in Willow Creek. Um, but he had, they've taken our money. As you can see, we only have $284 left in the household. Oh my gosh. I feel like that means that they have definitely approved him for service. Look, he is ready to fight. He has got his boxing gloves on. He is feeling super tense. So I'm actually going to go ahead and we are going to save and go to Managed Worlds. We're going to move Stanley out and he is actually being shipped overseas pretty much almost immediately. So uh, we're going to say goodbye to the beautiful world of Strangerville. And Stanley is actually being shipped over to, you know, this is a European base anyways. So he is actually going to move into this household with all of these soldiers that I've downloaded from the gallery. So we have arrived at the base. This is, like I said, the Windenburg uh, Army Base. He is actually going to be in the Air Force Stanley. So he's going to be, for the meantime, um, doing training here and working um, as an uh, military or as an Air Force pilot. So he will do all of his training here. So uh, in the main building, they have like an office area room where they do like conferences. And then this is obviously where all of their um, 
bunk beds are, where they sleep. This is like their supply room and like their army uniforms. Uh, I think this is really cool. Some of it's a little bit more high tech than it should be. So we'll probably have to change out some of it. So we've got these two guys working out here. We've got Carl and we have Malloy. <laughs> I love all these names. And I guess we'll probably get Stanley to start working on his fitness while he is here. But they were like, make sure you have them work on their fitness. Maybe it'll help them survive when the mod starts going. Uh, so we're gonna make sure all of these guys are really well trained for the army. Um, but in reality, you know, they really didn't get that long between when they joined the army or the air force or the navy to when they would go on their first mission. Sometimes they'd get lucky, but a lot of times, like, they didn't get a lot of training and they would just be thrown into the mix. So, um, I'm not sure how much t training and how much time I will have. Uh, so this is where Stanley's gonna be living. Look at all the guys looking at him like, oh, we got a new one, boys. Oh, look, he's... Yes, sir! So we're finished with Stanley. We actually have to head over now to another household because we have to move out the next one who is off to war. Alrighty, so we have actually arrived at the house of Edward and Theo and Elizabeth and beautiful Anna. And uh, I actually just finished building this house. I'm really proud of it. I will share it to the gallery. There's so much CC in here, but I'm very proud of it. Um, I've changed it into like a duplex for the two couples. Um, but we're not gonna be here too long. We do need to unfortunately bring Edward home and we need to send him off to the war. Um, if I'm being completely honest, I think um, Edward is the one that I am the most scared to lose personally, just because I feel like I have a personal connection to him and I'm in love with him. Um, but before we do that, I guess um, I should sh do a quick tour of their houses for you. So on the main floor, it is split into two different apartments. So on this side, we have Thea, Theo and Anna's place. And on this side, we have Edward and Elizabeth's place. Um, and as you can see, I definitely have two completely different styles for each of them. Uh, Elizabeth is a little bit more proper and a little bit more of a farm girl. So I've really focused on that for her style. Um, but it's basically the exact same layout for both houses. And then over here, this one is Anna and uh, Theo's side. I put this big Las Vegas sign here, or poster, because obviously uh, they got married there. And this little cutie has aged up into a toddler. I have not finished her makeover, so don't take this as like a forever look. I might even change her hair, I'm not sure yet. So we have like the more like uh, famous luxury style stuff, then I, try to stick with like reds and greens for Anna and Theo's place and then they each have their own little yard and then upstairs we have Anna and Theo's bedroom with their super adorable wedding picture they are so cute um, and of course their outfits and a mirror is very important to them and then in the room here we have little Patsy's bedroom it is a very small we're gonna have to figure something out for when she becomes a teen uh, but anyways, she's got a picture of her parents on the wall and also her birth certificate. Then when you come over here, we have Anna, or we have Elizabeth and Edward's side of the house. I've taken so many cute pictures of the two of them together. Um, he's got a picture of her on his nightstand and vice versa. And it's just such a cute little house. And here is beautiful little Elizabeth. Now, Edward is not married. He is technically a single guy. I mean, he is in a relationship with Elizabeth, um, but he would be one of the first names to be uh, drawn in the uh, draft because the draft required all young men, uh, young men to um, register. So he has actually just got home from a gig. He's been working really hard on getting his fame up. Um, but he's just got home and he is going to check the mail. So I'll let him go ahead and get the mail. And in the mail, he has actually seen that he has got his draft letter. He has been called to duty because he is not married and because he is so young he is one of the first names to have been pulled in his area so he's gonna come over and he's gonna have a private conversation with elizabeth and he's gonna say you know hi i'm home from work how are you and she's like i'm good so he's gonna say to her you know i got a letter in the mail today and i've actually been 
called, they have pulled my draft number and I have to ship out in three days time. Um, and Elizabeth is probably really in shock, but at the same time, she knows she's not married to Edward yet, so she's probably feeling like uh, she understands. And she also knows that it's a they are a military family and so she probably understands that Edward you know is the type of guy who would never like run from it he would be very confident and pursue it so Elizabeth is probably feeling pretty sad I would imagine but she's just gonna say to Edward like okay we've got this uh you know like we'll figure it out it's gonna be okay he's just gonna say well you know i really appreciate your support i'm really glad that you're okay with it and she's like well i'm not okay with it he's like i know i you, it's not what i meant but like you know i'm really uh, grateful to have he's gonna express his fondness he's gonna say i'm just so grateful to have your support and know that you're here for me um so he's gonna come over and he's gonna tell his brother too and you know tell him what's going on and say, you know, hey, bro, you know, I just want to let you know I finally got the letter. You know, I knew, we all knew it was coming, but um, I've been called off. I'm supposed to leave in three days' time. So um, Theo's like, what? Like, what? You're going to war? And Edward's like, yeah, but fortunately, they're only sending me over to the Willow Creek base right now. You know, I just have to go do some basic training, I guess. So that's where they're sending me. So Theo's like, okay, well, you know, Maybe I won't be that far behind. And Edward's like, well, I hope it doesn't last that long and you don't have to go to war at all. You've got kids, you've got a family. And uh, Theo's like, yeah, but you want a family and I'm sure you want to marry, you know, Elizabeth and everything. And Edward's gonna say, well, you know, I have to focus on this first and, you know, hopefully when I get back, we can do that. And Theo's like, what if you don't come back? And Edward's like, don't talk like that. I'll be fine. You know, trying to keep it more chill. I think secretly, uh, Edward's probably really scared, even though he's like such a calm guy. Um, and that's probably why he's not sharing how he's feeling with Theo, because he is a little bit more closed off. He's not as open in general of a person. So uh, he's probably having a harder time expressing to his brother that he might be really scared. So in three days time, Edward is going to be moving out of this house and joining the army, but I'm not moving him yet because I want him, I, I have an episode where I think he has a little bit of business to take care of and hopefully some kids to produce before he goes to war because I cannot lose these jeans. So the next episode is going to be focusing on Edward and Elizabeth and their love before he ships off to war. So I hope you guys are looking forward to that part. I just kind of wanted to touch on that really quickly and let you know that I haven't forgotten he is a part of batch one. He is a part of the first group of men that is going to be going to war. But just not today. <laughs> um, and the last one that we have to go visit is Charles. So we will jump over and go see Charles. So we have just joined the house of Charles, Aaron, and and little Bailey, and of course little Jace. Um, as you can see, the house definitely looks a little bit bigger and a little bit different because I have been working on renovating it for this beautiful family. So um, I've made a backyard where Jace can play, so I'm really excited about that. And upstairs, I have gone ahead and I've kind of finished uh, renovating a little bit. So when you come through the hallway, I've changed things a bit. Um, um, in here, I have made it the bathroom. And of course, um, Erin loves, you know, blues and pinks. So she's really done a lot of blues in her house. Also, I would say in general, I've just been very inspired by blues lately and greens. So that has definitely been a big inspiration with how I build right now. <laughs> um, and I don't think I changed Bailey's room at all. Her room's pretty much the exact same, but definitely it got bigger. So I'll be able to get her a bigger bed soon. Um, and then when you come over here, we have Aaron and Charles' bedroom, which has been completely renovated and put up their wedding picture above their bed. And they have like a little sitting area and a little chest for themselves, which goes, and then a little door that goes out to the deck. 
And then right down the hallway at the end, we have Jace's new bedroom, which is so cute. I gave him um, pretty much all the same stuff, but just in a little bit of a uh, smaller bedroom for him. But he is so cute, isn't he? I just love him, and I love how his bedroom turned out. Uh, so I hope you guys really like how their house turned out. I think it's pretty cute if you ask me. Um, it's not finished, obviously. I'm still trying to figure out what to do with this space. I don't know if I should turn this into a dining room or if I should turn it into like a kid's study area. I haven't really decided what I want to do with this. We are here because Charles Dempsey has on the exact same day as his brother Edward also received the same order. However, his is more urgent because of the fact that he has already been working with the military. He's already been enlisted as an army doctor. Um, it's not new to him that he has to join the army. So unfortunately, Charles has gotten the call that he has actually been requested to go overseas to um, overseas to a very tiny tropical island because the military doctor there um, actually did not make it and they need a new doctor to care for the troops there. So he is actually being sent over somewhere really deep in the thick of it. And I think that that is probably the worst person to send to this because of the fact that he is more of an, you know, a, a studier and a reader type of guy. He's not um, the type of guy who would really want to be on the front lines in a battle. Um, but he is going to be sent to one of the worst areas of all. So he has received his letter and he is actually spending his last night with his family before he has to. To go ship off in the morning so he's gonna come out and be really cute to his wife and just try to spend time with her and let her know how much he loves her and you know apologize for the fact that you know he's gonna be gone and you know be so scared about the fact that he doesn't know what's gonna happen and Erin I think because she is so Erin is a very strong woman and I think she knows that even though Charles is a strong man, he's not a strong man when it comes to this type of stuff. Um, I think that Charles might be the type that would be pretty scared to go. Uh, so she is going to try to just reassure him and be like, you know, everything's going to be fine and not get too much into it because she doesn't want to make him feel afraid. She just wants him to feel relaxed and happy on his last evening at home for maybe forever or maybe for the short time. You know, we don't know. So she is giving him a kiss and telling him she loves him and she's just going to say, you know, everything's going to be okay. You don't have to worry about us at all. Your family's here. I'm so close with them. I've got my mom and dad. I'll make sure the kids are going to do great. I'll make sure they send you letters all the time. You're never going to miss out on anything. Charles is like, I just don't want to miss Jace growing up. And, you know, I thought we were going to have a big family and now I'm leaving you and you're gonna take care of these kids on your own. She's like, this is what I've always wanted, Charles. You're not doing anything to me. I am so grateful that you've given me this life. I am so grateful that I have these children and that you have always been so supportive of me having kids. I just love you so much and I know you're gonna be okay. You know, you just worry about yourself overseas. Please don't worry about us, we're fine. And I think knowing that he's got such a strong wife at home that really can take care of herself and that he has such a big family that of course is gonna make sure she's okay. That's gonna bring him a lot of comfort. So I am gonna let him and um, Aaron definitely do for woohoos. Okay, so it's the next morning. Jace has woken up very hungry. So he's just gonna say to Bailey and to his family, you know, Bailey, I'm just so proud of the woman you've become. You know, please help your mom while I'm gone. I'm gonna miss you so much. I know you're gonna do a great job. You know, listen to your mother. You know, we both want you to get an education. You know, I love you. And you know, you know that you're always gonna be my little girl and that I love you so much. So she's like, thank you so much, dad. I really appreciate it. And she's just gonna say goodbye to him. And unfortunately, I think Chase needs to go to sleep. So Aaron's gonna put him to sleep. They've been able to say their goodbye. Um, so unfortunately, Bailey has to go off to school. She's looking pretty good. I think she's okay. She's feeling a little sad. Yeah, she's feeling a shared sadness about her father leaving. So he's gonna come up here and he is going to kiss his loving wife goodbye. 
for hopefully not the last time, but at least the last time in a while. Oh, I'm going to miss him. So it is time for him to go. Uh, Aaron says, nobody makes me happier than you. Oh my gosh, these two cuties. Why are they doing this? How sweet. I really do feel loved. Okay, so it is time now to move Charles out and show you where he is going to be. Okay, so we have arrived at the military base where Charles is going to be serving. Now this is one that has just been built up. It is on a shorefront that they have secured during their battles. Um, and a lot of shipments are coming in here for supplies for more soldiers that are more inland. And he is going to be running the uh, medical hospital here. So we do have a little area for them to sleep. We do have some bathrooms and some showers. And then we have a very messy office here with one of the soldiers and just a basic lunch room. And then uh, I guess maybe in this empty supplies crate area, we might be able to build some type of medical office for him. Uh, he has arrived in his pajamas. Oh my gosh, Charles, you are not making a great first impression. I'll just put him in this for now. Um, I have downloaded a bunch of vintage um, army outfits, primarily for women, not so much for men, but they're really cute. They look like the Andrew sisters outfits, so very cool. Um, so Charles is meeting some of his fellow soldiers, uh, the men that he is going to help care for on this base. He is literally in the middle of nowhere. He probably never thought he would see an ocean compared to where he lived. Oh look, that's a nice name. My name is Charles. It's nice to meet you, David. He's still so proper. Uh, that's what I mean by Charles being the type of guy who might be really scared to go to army or to war in the sense that he's more of like a, a smart, like, um, um, office type guy. Not so much of a like, hey, let me hand you a gun or hey, let me help you blow that camp up. <laughs> Um, so anyways, um, I think it's going to be a huge adjustment for Charles, but he, if Charles is anything, he is determined and intelligent. Um, and he knows he has a very supportive, loving wife back at home, rooting him on. He is feeling focused. He knows what his job is while he is here. He knows what he has to do, and he is going to take care of all of these soldiers. So that is kind of where we're going to leave this episode. I hope you are all looking forward to it. This is the first batch of men off to war. I am also going to send Albert off to war. I just haven't decided what base I want him on yet, um, but we'll maybe send him off to war in the episode um, next week with Edward. So how I kind of see this going is for the next couple weeks we will have episodes where we're training the men and preparing them for war and then we will also have episodes where we're focusing on the other characters and what's going on in their lives like Doris and Emma and all of the women you know and Anna and Elizabeth um, and then you know in a little bit we will do the first batch of men's big showdown and we'll see who survived that round and then the next one we will start shipping off more men to the war because they've lost casualties they need to recruit more men so they start taking family men they start taking harry they start taking theo because they all the young single men are dying so <laughs> that's kind of my idea i'm super excited about it i'm like I said, I'm nervous, but I think it'll be really fun. I did test the mod off of camera. It works really great, so I'm really looking forward to it. So if you enjoyed this video, please go ahead and give this video a big thumbs up. It really helps me out, and I'd really appreciate it. And until next time, I'm going to say bye for now.